Hello to you in Banjo, Dakar, Lufa County in Liberia, Accra, Abuja, Freetown, Monrovia, Nairobi and our friends across Benin and the world. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this week's edition of your news and current affairs program, Weekly Top News, where we examine developing stories and news from a different angle. And it's coming to you from West Africa, Democracy Radio, 94.9 FM Dakar and online at WADR.org. Let's remind you that previous editions of this program are available online at WADR.org, AudioMark and SoundCloud. I am Imo Edit, your anchor. And for the next hour, we will be looking at news stories and developments across the sub-region. In this edition, Abdullahi Hassan is bringing us a summary of the reports and stories that made headlines during the week on The Review. Good to have you, Abdullahi, and welcome. Hello, Imo, and thank you for having me, and hello to you out there. The political situation in Senegal dominated the news at home and abroad, and several reactions came in following President Macky Sall's announcement of his non-candidacy in the 2024 general elections. Among those that reacted to his decision was the opposition political coalition, Yewu Askanwi, which continued to press home its second demand after President Macky Sall's declaration of non-candidacy. Biram Sule Jup is a member of PASTEF. The candidacy of Usman Sonko is a political request, a request of the people. It will not depend and it will not depend in any way on a political conspiracy or a judicial conspiracy. Usman Sonko will be a candidate. We will campaign with him. He will take his program and if our wish is accepted by the good Lord, he will be president in 2024. Also reacting is Amadou C. Albert, a political analyst. It's possible to find a consensus. The National Dialogue has opened up avenues, and I don't see why not. Even the president himself has said that he's extending his hand to everyone. Now, it is also true that here we ask can we must be up to the task of appeasement. We have to get out of this very tense cycle to engage in a much more peaceful presidential election. Meanwhile, local and international analysts praised President Sall's move as a giant leap in restoring peace in one of Africa's modern democracies following a series of violent confrontations. Financially, the announcement saw a rally in the Senegalese international bonds as investors welcomed President Sall's decision, but it appears there is more that lies ahead as Zewi Askanwi intensifies its agenda. Still on political matters, some dust was stirred in Nigeria as the federal government rejected the European Union's report on the 2023 general elections dismissing the conclusions of the EU Electoral Observer Mission as jaundiced. Delia Lake, the special advisor to President Bola Tinubu on special duties, communications and strategy emphasized that on February 25, 2023, the presidential election was clearly and fairly won by Tsunubu, the candidate of All Progressives Congress APC. Alake urged the EU and other foreign interests to be objective and allow Nigeria to handle its internal affairs. Also, during the week, the Malian transitional government went through a partial cabinet reshuffle affecting 16 portfolios. The reshuffle carried out by Konel Asimi Goita was in part supervised by the head of government, Shogel Kokalamaiga. This is the first cabinet reshuffle by Konel Asimi Goita since his official assumption of power on June 7, 2021, which dismissed 12 ministers. Matisi filed that report. The cabinet reshuffle announced on the state media affected the ministries of national education, higher education, health and social development, labor, public service, and social dialogue. Others are youth and sports, Malians living abroad and African integration, agriculture, and national entrepreneurship, employment, and vocational training, as well as those of women, children, and the family urban planning, housing, the environment, communication, and animal husbandry and fishing. 
While 14 of the former ministries were replaced, four others changed ministerial portfolios. Mosa Agataher, previously Minister of Youth and Sports, now occupies the Ministry of Malians, Living Abroad and African Integration. Alhamdu Agilian, former Minister of Malians, now resumes his appointment as the Minister of Communication and the Digital Economy. Thirdly, the Minister Delegate to the Ministry of Rural Development, Yubaba, now takes over the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries. Finally, Amadou Keita takes charge as the Minister of Mines, moving away from his previous position as the Head of Higher Education. The other ministers keep their posts, and the number of members of the government remains at 28. Meanwhile, in neighboring Burkina Faso, thousands of Burkinabi held a rally in the capital Ouagadougou and other administrative regions in solidarity with the military government. Unlike other demonstrations, they are this time calling on the authorities to urgently draft a new constitution for the country, a call earlier made by the National Coordination of Civil Society Organizations of Burkina Faso. Ogi Obirika has the details. Captain Ibrahim Traore's regime is in recent times gaining popularity for his reportedly remarkable transformative policies and continued commitment to the fight against terrorism. The reasons for which thousands gathered over the weekend to show support for the authorities in advancing their priorities, including drafting a new constitution. Boldly written on the placards held by protesters are yes to the rereading of the constitution, no to French policy and do not touch our transition. Civil society leaders from France, Guinea, Congo and Mali, a country that recently voted for a new constitution, took part in the meeting in Ouagadougou. In his address, Ghislaine Dabira, a spokesperson for the network of CSOs that organized the rally, said Burkina Faso's sovereignty must no longer be partial but total and non-negotiable, a campaign he says the group remains mobilized for. In several other administrative regions like Bobo Jolasso, Wahiguya, Fadangoma, Banfora and Toy, thousands answered the call and assembled in support of the transition. Oge Biruka reporting. Now, this last report has been attracting reactions in Ghana and international community. This follows Ghana's parliament's unanimous adoption of the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021. The object of the bill is to provide for what promoters of the bill described as proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values and prohibit lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, LGBTQ+, and related activities. Here are some of the members of parliament speaking for the bill when they debated it. The law, as we have it now, prescribes unnatural canal knowledge without even adding anything. So. There is nothing also before us requesting of us to pass a law to allow that so far. Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy that this House of 275 members all endorse this bill. And, and we are religiously going to support the bill to pass. It is incumbent on us as members of parliament to craft a piece of legislation that is not in conflict with our constitution or existing legislation. And so I commend the committee for the extensive work that they have done to clean up the, the bill that was presented to us and to come up with the amendments that they have proposed. It is very worrying that those who have been canvassing for this, for lack of better word, madness to be allowed to continue in our country are not averting to their minds to three things. And I will always say the first thing, regardless of which other human being you are, there's something you believe. Whatever you believe, whether you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, you are a Buddhist, you are a pagan, you believe in something. What has your scripture said about this? Well, Imo, that's the much we can take on the review of developing stories this week. It's back to you.
Thank you, Abdullahi, for those reviews of stories that made headlines during the week. Let's now make room for some discussions. Elections are the main pillars of democracy and have become a commonly accepted means to legitimize governance institutions in West Africa and indeed the world over. However, some quarters see elections as one key trigger of violence and insecurity in the sub-region. Better management of electoral processes by key stakeholders, electoral management bodies being the most important ones, could raise the credibility and acceptance of elections, reduce the risk of violence, conflict, and thereby contribute to the consolidation of democracy in West Africa. In this second part of the program, my panelists will take a critical look at elections and violence in West Africa as well as the preservation of democracy in Senegal. We will also analyze the threat to democratic institutions following West African leaders' quest for a long grip on power. My guests for this panel discussion are Abdul Aziz Sisi, Advocacy Assistant at Africtivist and of course Uyi Aibe, Governance Expert and Political Activist. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you. you. Joining us, so I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Sisi. Uh, since you're here, I will start with the uh, you know, a case study of Senegal. What do you think uh, would have been the worst case scenario if President Macky Sall ignored every other signs and uh, went ahead to announce that he's running for a third term? What do you think would have been the worst case? First of all, thanks, Imo, and uh, hello to, to, to my dear uh, co-panelists. Uh, as you already already know, President Makisal has uh, released a declaration uh, Monday night, and he he said that he will he want to be uh, you know one of the candidates on pre- 2014 president 2004 presidential election, mm. and I think that that is a uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, good peace uh, action yeah. for the for, for for the Senegalese political situation because uh, the situation was so volatile here and the, the, there is a, a quite a calm right now. Okay. So as as you as, as you say, if if Makisal if Makisal say that he will run for another mm. uh, another term, I think that will be a a, a, a chaos. Here, because uh, FN Cat FN Cat is the is the largest uh, civil society coalition here in Senegal, and one of the one of the uh, you know uh, struggle point is fighting against uh, President Makisal third term bid and other political you know parties political opponents like Usman Sonko and 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 the others they all. They, they all were fighting about against these, uh, these, these, these candidacy. I think that president and, and, and there was a lot of pressure to, to President Makisal uh, in order to, to, to avoid, uh, you know, these, these, uh, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these I think his uh, need to, to do a third term. So that that will be a, 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 I can't I can't imagine what will be uh, if Makisal if President Makisal uh, you know declared that he will run for a, for another term. So that's why his decision was a wise decision, I think, and it will be uh, how I can say uh, saluted and magnified by 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 many 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 Senegalese and many other. Uh, fellow Africans yeah. and you know and in the international community so far and so far okay. and because the situation was was so so volatile and uh, so uh, you know burning here mm. uh, in, in late in late June uh, almost uh, I think 16, 16 people uh, mm. 16 people according, according to official K figures mm-hmm. 16 people have been there. And according to Amnesty International, uh, it was 23, uh, 23 uh, people. people. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, that was so so heavy. You know, so so uh, sad for for us. And the the decision was so 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 wise. Mm. All right. Thanks. Well, let, let let me come to you, Mr. Igbe. Um, uh, two questions I'm going to be throwing out to you. Uh, the first is as an outsider. 
uh, looking at how the political situation in Senegal was uh, turning or is turning be before now. What was your reaction? What what? Uh, what, what what was your thought? Thank you very much. And um, like my panelists already said, Mr. C.C., thanks. And I'm delighted to be part of this panel conversation. Let me put on record that whether or not uh, President Marcus so eventually came out to, to uh, in a, that national broadcast mm. that was not running for election, but he allowed himself to be used and the blood of the innocent people that died from the agitation is in his hand. Those blood, those people that died will never come back to life. President Mackey had an opportunity to have maintained a course of action that he himself fought for. Mm -hmm. What came to mind when the violence was going on in Senegal was that what, what has gone wrong with our African mentality? Professor Chuna Achebe, in 1983, wrote a book, The Problem with a Black Man. Usually, it is not a black man's problem. It's an individual problem. Mm. Mark Saw came to power on riding on the wings of agitation against the president, Wada, who wanted to run for a third term. Mm. And the pressure of these same sorts, the people went on the street, people died, there were property destroyed, people went abroad or, uh, and started doing advocacy from outside the country. And the current president was part of that struggle. He was again from the struggle on the lives of people or properties that were lost in that, um, uh, in that struggle. Suddenly, is back to the same position that it will take its time to rea to announce there was no good for third term, even though in other words, Mr. Igbe, is, there, there wouldn't have been any need for him to have dragged this situation that long before making a, a statement which he made on Monday. Yes, because the president was the same person who said there was no need for a seven-year term. Mm -hmm. The same president reduce the tenure of uh, from seven years to five years and in fact the same president claimed that he was not going to run for a second term in office the same president after running the first seven years and changed the constitution to five years ran again for five years suddenly realized that 12 years was not enough that he needed another five years hmm. there was no need to have put himself there was no need. Hmm. In fact, it's coming out to now denounce his third term bid. Came late, came very late, very late, even though it also came at the needed time. Hmm. Because more souls, more people would have died. The same thing hmm. that happened with Wada would have happened again in 2012, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are back to that same situation. And you know the problem is, and that's what I usually say with the with the regional body, the ECOWAS. Mm. The ECOWAS needed to be strong enough to tell people you are doing the wrong thing. I, I, I think there's also a selective, selective work in terms of the kind of work that ECOWAS does. The truth is, uh, if we if President Marcus or signed up to to tenure issues and he pulled that by amended the constitution nobody said you cannot do seven seven years and by now you still have more two years to go he thought and based on his presidential power amended the constitution and everybody including the entire region of africa applauded what he did mm. suddenly he spoiled by himself the kind of glory he gave to himself when he said seven years was too much and there was need for for ten, tenure, ten, tenure uh, uh, yeah. ten, reduction, ten, tenure based in the in, in the constitution, mm -hmm. and it was highly applauded. All of those applaud, in my opinion, it destroyed. Mm. It destroyed. Mm. Well, secondly, I, 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 you know, I told you two two quick key questions. Um, mm -hmm. Why um, is election a key trigger of violence and insecurity? Not just. Um, 
this is an overall view now in West Africa. We yes. saw that happen in Nigeria. We saw that almost playing out in 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 uh, in Sierra Leone. In alone. We saw that in Ghana. Why is election a key trigger of violence and insecurity? Thank you. Uh, 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 yeah, let me state that, like you already said in your introductory statement, mm. election is one form of validating democracy in a country. The, the, the election you hold and the credibility and integrity of election that you conduct does uh, play a role in strengthening or in the kind of democratic architecture that a country does have. Election, not just in Africa, all over the world, even in Russia, even though we have had a president in Russia since 1999, <laughs> it, it continued to run. We have had elections in, 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 um, in, in, in Rwanda, and even in, even in our countries in Uganda and Cameroon, and Cameroon yeah. they use election, they use election to validate, including, I think, Equatorial Guinea. Yes. They use election to validate their stay in office. Unlike in a typical military regime where you don't need to election. So elections are valid. But why is election becoming a crisis situation? Because of the aftermath of an election. The winner wins all syndrome of our political landscape mm. is a challenge. If we operate systems like the United Kingdom, where the PRO system works and it works effectively, that party with the majority eventually form government, but you still have parties in parliament who position themselves as a very strong um, uh, opposition, opposition in a way that in a way that control the government in power. But in African context. In fact, in Angola, it's even worst case scenario. You elect a president and he forms the parliament and forms the government, forms everything. But in Sierra Leone, it's even better. You run elections, uh, even though it's a PRO system mm -hmm. at the parliamentary level. But you still have the, the, the presidential and all of that. But the powers that you acquire once you are elected in West Africa, in Africa, is just too much. Mm. Too much in the sense that once you become president of a country, elected, you become God, small g. Mm. You, can, you can change your constitution, you can, you can string the civic space and make sure that at the end of the day, you are the only one, you are the only one that have a say. Every opposition is shut down. We have seen that happen in Senegal already. With the shutdown of the opposition leader, and with the allegation of cases, rape cases, and other cases, just to keep him away from the circulation. Because of the strength of the opposition, governments who have power, because power is, in Africa is absolute. Mm -hmm. Power in West Africa is absolute. And absolute power destroys. Indeed. Again, mm -hmm. the reason why election is a conflict situation is the power that you derive from political participation. Politics has become the highest paying jobs in Africa, in West <laughs> Africa. In Nigeria, you mentioned, mm. once you become a counselor, you are even richer than, you are richer than someone, a professor, who, a professor yeah. who taught you in the university. Yeah. The moment you become a governor, that same professor who taught you some 15, 20 years ago, we have to kneel down for you to get appointment. Mm. And once the professor gets appointment, the number of years, he has taught, maybe 25 years he has taught in university, one year as a political office holder is much more than the 25 years of teaching. Mm. And that is a problem in the West African region. Of course, in Africa, mm. maybe we cannot say that as an issue in, in, in the global south like the US and co. But that's a problem of Africa. A counselor and more than a professor in Nigeria. A counselor and more than an oil worker Someone who works in Snowbedger, mm -hmm. in Shell, mm -hmm. Chevron. Many years ago, these were the these were the big boys. Yeah, they were the big boys. Now, the top shots. Now yeah. they are no longer the big boys. Mm -hmm. Now they are no longer. Go to Aqua Ibon State. Go to Cross River. Go to Edo. Mm -hmm. Go to Delta. Go to uh, Port Harcourt. The real oil, oil oil state of Nigeria. If you want to know the big boys, they hold political position. They are no longer the boys of Chevron 
Snowbelger mm. or Shell. They are not those Police who occupy pos- pos- political positions. Well, Mr. And Mr. that's the problem. Yeah, Mr. 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 Igbe, let me hold your thought then. then let's come back to Senegal uh, to talk to uh, Mr. Sisse. Uh, we know this uh, issue, a uh, political issue in the country, uh, that's been dragging since last year, up till Monday when the president addressed the nation. Before now, there was a move for a national dialogue uh, instituted by the president. Uh, do you think that dialogue played a key role in the current uh, peace which we have right now? Okay, uh, thank you more for the question. But first, uh, first of all, I want to you know, uh, thank my co-panelist because what he said uh, is so insightful okay. uh, about Senegal and, and, and about uh, electoral violence here in, 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 West, in Africa and West Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I want just to add that for the situation of uh, totally, I, I totally agree with him because so many people died since uh, uh, 2021. So many people have died because people who saw Makisalo will run for President Makisal will run for, and people were uh, taking the, the street in order to fight, you know, uh, against these these uh, um, ambition. Even if even if uh, he did not really clearly cl- clearly and precisely say that he will run for another term. Mm. But the surrounders uh, told that every every time and in every place. Think that as we we we, we used to, uh, to 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 say, better better take it than than, than never. ever. Mm-hmm. That's a wise decision that we you know we uh, we, we magnify. So for your question about the the dialogue, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can we can in in a part in a part we can on on a part we can say that this is a, a you know a move this is a, one of the point of of uh, the the you know the peaceful uh, situation the current peaceful situation right now in in in, in Senegal I I I want to be you know, I want to be, uh, uh, to make attention to be careful <laughs> because the situation can burn and can be yeah. volatile yeah. Uh, anytime. anytime. Mm. So, yeah, but right now there is a quiet and the dialogue. The dialogue we have uh, in you know in June yeah. from nine to twenty five to twenty fifth June uh, is one of the points that. You know, uh, uh, make us to be in a in a, in kind of situation because there were uh, agreements, uh, agreement points. There were also disagreement points, and there were also strong statements by civil society did not participate in the dialogue. Uh, in Senegal, we have a, a, a culture of dialogue uh, since. Uh, you know the independence and before before the the, the, the our independence people have the the, the, the culture to dialogue about everything uh, and in this last dialogue people were, were there in order to you know to express what we really feel what the what is what what uh, that stake in the country what people think about Makisal bridging Makisal's uh, system and, and and his ambition to, to to make a third term, etc., etc., mm. and that was also, that was also uh, agreement point for for sponsorship sponsorship of uh, elections uh, uh, of elections. Uh, they, they they have a point of agreement. If uh, I think yesterday yesterday that was uh, um, the, uh, um, the minister council mm. and President uh, Makhtar tell to his uh, uh, to his ministry of uh, of justice go to the assembly and uh, to the parliament and and you know make change the electoral court and to and to allow people like Khalifa Saleh like others to participate in the in the, in the, in the next election the, the, uh, as he, as he said it in his declaration he want he wanted to prepare fair and open elections and we have kind of you know kind of points kind of solution in this dialogue mm. the, the, that's why I, 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 I uh, you know, I would say that this dialogue is one of the of the uh, of the actions okay. uh, may really uh, be in a, in a peaceful situation right now here in in, in Canada. Oh, indeed. Uh, well, Mr. Igbe, do you think uh, it should be of a concern uh, that despite elections bringing in successive governments, the sub-region still faces poverty, poor reforms, 
insecurity under development let me put it that way amongst others are these the concerns with the type of leadership the region has should we base this concern on that the type of people uh, the type of leaders who come in to govern five years after five years four years after four years it is still the same thing yes uh the the thing about this continent and of course west africa i like to borrow the word of former president of the united states barack obama when he visited ghana in 2009 he said that the challenge of africa is because there are too many strong men and weak institutions our problems our challenge in africa and in fact in west africa let's stick with west africa yeah is there are too many weak institutions one man can undermine democratic institutions and rubbish them without recourse to the development pattern of a country so this is what the difference between political leaders and administrative leaders institution help the political leaders to operate in a manner that generates development outcomes in west africa once you are elected president you want to undermine those institutions of governance those institutions of development and this thing we talk about this thing we talk about succession or or sustainability of development indicators mm. Mm. Because in, uh, in West Africa, people want development to be attached to their names. So once you come in to power, you don't want to have recourse to the former president, especially when there's a struggle. For example, in Senegal, the next president will be coming in, maybe not within the current president party, maybe from another party, who want to erode all the gains of the market saw administration. And want to start all over again. Mm. The challenge is that we kept starting over again. No continuity. It happened in 2015. Mm. It exactly it happened in 2015 in Nigeria. All the development indicators, the development progression that President Gulo Jonathan, former President Gulo Jonathan, has started. The moment Buhari became president, he wanted a name for himself, mm. and he came. He left the government after eight years worsening the development architecture of the nigerian state in ghana there seems to be an improvement in ghana with all due respect even though ghana also has some shortfalls the current of uh nana for those government people argue that there's a shrinking space in ghana however they also say that there has some improvement when you compare to john mahama mm. but if you listen to another uh, another circle they tell you that uh, Nana has fallen short of development goals. That what he ought to have done, picking up from what John, John Mahama has done, would have been better. Hmm. The same thing is happening even in Syria alone. That with NS Koroma, what he has done, the current president, who just won the election, would have done better by picking up from where they are. That they, People say the dollar moved from 700 leons, mm. now it's about 200 leons. These are the things that weaken our development. Rather than for democracy to drive development, development uh, democracy is slowing down development because once you are elected to power, you want a name. And usually it's eight years. And when you want to look at, and that's why people try to refer to Rwanda, and I've also argued, no, don't refer to Rwanda. Mm. Rwanda is not a good practice. Because if you look at Rwanda, can we also talk about Cameroon? Mm. Can we also talk about Equatorial Guinea? Can we also talk about um, Uganda? Long stay in power has not brought about those changes. But look at the US, where systems are strong, where institutions are strongest. Look at the UK. Look at elsewhere, Canada, where systems are strong. That's when development comes. It has nothing to do with democracy. It has nothing to do with changing government. It has to do with strong institutions that help democracy to strive. In any case, these democratic institutions are embedded in the system structure. But 
politicians have a way of weakening them, and that's the bane of Africa of West Africa's development. Sister, do, do you think pressure groups like opposition parties, uh, religious uh, entities, civil society organizations make a lot of influence in governance? Yes, we know that they play a key role, but in our context in West Africa, I mean, like Mr. I mentioned. <laughs> Most times you see them being shrinked, being silent. Uh, do you think uh, in the last 10 years, we've seen uh, pressure groups, opposition parties really play their key role as they ought to in government? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, political, uh, political opposition parties, uh, civil society organizations, so far and so far, really in, in this last uh, decade, really participate and try to, uh, you know, to, to, to redirect the governance in, 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 in Africa. They, the, the participation is really, really, uh, how I can say, uh, insightful, is, is, is really, really uh, interesting and has make, uh, w is a, a really change maker in this in, in, in the African context. Like my, my wife finally said, Afri the, the, the African president, the African leaders, you know, undermine the powers when they, they, they get to, 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 you know, to, to it. We don't have a solid institution, you know, mm. and good institution. That's why people in power uh, usually, usually undermine what they, they, they find, they, they, they find in, in, in the power. Mm. And the civil society organization and the civil movements really participate in order to change what is happening in the country uh, from the from the from the the, the 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 independence to the to the to the 90s. You know, like you know, let me let me just uh, come back to the to the Senegalese situation. The situation, I think, this is the situation that I really uh, you know uh, master more than the others. For this, really take the Senegalese situation. You know, whatever whatever people uh, say, it, that there is a you know uh, um, President Macky has taken this decision, uh, you know, to, mm. to to his own uh, will, etc., uh, etc. Et whatever whatever it is, whatever the comments, uh, the renunciation is the fruit of the Senegalese people. Intransigent determination to ensure the survival of the representative political model. This, this political model that has protected us for decades again, against any kind of autocracy or dictatorship, you know? Mm. And, and then also, there has also been constant pressure from civil society movements, like I said, political organizations. Uh, and don't forget also, don't forget also, because right now there is a joint venture between uh, civil society organizations in, in, in the African country, like what, what, what I must, uh, uh, did right now in, in West Africa. Mm. And there, there was a little pressure from civil institutions and personality in, in the continent. And in Western, uh, you know, uh, we, can, we can go, we can be, you know, white and go to the, to the, to the, to the Western. You know, that mm. was uh, those pressures those uh, warnings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, was a really, 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 really good and a really uh, impactful uh, point that made, that made him uh, renown renounce in in his uh, will about making a, a, a certain attempt. And and uh, uh, just to finish, okay. there is a a new point that uh, people. You know, will 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 not uh, usually mention where they talk about what is changing uh, in these last decades in in, in Africa. Uh, it is the the, the launching the, the the work that cyber activists and that internet has brought to the to the struggle. There was there, there were not internet people will never never know what was happening in the in the in the, in the country. Mm. Very true. Uh, even, what, yeah. Even if, even if internet was restricted, even if internet was restricted, people, you know, usual people uh, was uh, inform informing, people was warning about what is happening mm. in the country. That is a really good, you know, uh, add to the struggle 
and I, I really want to, to 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 mention it. Indeed. In driving home this conversation, Mr. Ibe, you mentioned earlier uh, ECOWAS, uh, you know, coming in in all of this, and ECO, ECOWAS being uh, selective. Um, let me put it that way. Uh, do, do you think um, uh, we should still define the role of ECOWAS when it comes to uh, democratic governance, uh, strengthening institutions of member nations? Um, over time, people have you know criticized ECOWAS for failing to even uh, be there when the likes of Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, you know, needed ECOWAS to have acted as you know uh, a bigger body for these countries. Uh, do you think the role of uh, ECOWAS is is um, undermined in in instances like this? Because I bet this is for you. Why not trying to make ECOWAS look like a, a dog that back <laughs> without biting? It's also important to 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 put in perspective mm. the weakness, the weakness of the institution. Mm. Countries are sovereign. Countries take decisions. Belonging to the West African region is voluntary. Mm -hmm. For example, what is happening right now in Mali and the Burkina Faso, the introduction of the Russian oligarchy into our Sahel uh, region is worrisome. Because countries can decide to say, well, I don't want French anymore. I don't want France anymore. In fact, I don't want ECOWAS. What I want is Nigeria. Mm. And that's okay for me. Nigeria can survive me. Mm. Or I want um, China. After all, it's called technical support and uh, technical cooperation. Mm. But ECOWAS ought to act like that bulwark to each of those countries. Countries who are living below standard, ECOWAS can come in and support the citizens. But right now, what we have in ECOWAS is what is called the ECOWAS state. The agitation, and already that is going on, to move ECOWAS beyond the ECOWAS of state to the ECOWAS of the people. Yeah. An injury to a Senegalese should be an injury to a Nigerian. Hmm. An injury to a Ghanaian should be an injury to a Ceremonian. Mm -hmm. An injury to a Togolese should be an injury to the rest of the West African region. But the way it is, these states, the heads of state, have a, a meeting point and they take decision on behalf of all of us. That is why it's extremely difficult for ECOWAS to look in the face and tell Maki to say, you have no right to move on. We are, we are talking about Maki today in Senegal. We may end up talking about Burkina Faso, I mean, uh, what is it? The Gambia yeah. tomorrow. Because that is something I can see already in the future, far ahead. Hmm. That by the time the second term is over, it is not enough. It wants a third term. We don't want another Yayami. Hmm. But if you don't put those institutions and, uh, and those in place, it will happen because the, Ga the Gambia will speak through their head of government, and it is the head of government who wants to remain in power. How can you then hear? How can ECOWAS then act when the person who attended the meeting of the ECOWAS head of state is the one that is interested to bend the rules, <laughs> to bend the protocol mm. in ECOWAS? It's not possible. It is not possible. Mm. If President Buhari wanted to run for a third term, can ECOWAS stop him? No, no. he can't. The same thing when Senegal want, a Senegalese president wanted to run for a third term, there was no advisory from ECOWAS publicly. Apparently, the ECOWAS would have done its back end work. ECOWAS will always do the back end work, but the back end is not political enough. To say to the person, I, okay, fine, I don't want. The national dialogue in Senegal, apparently, is what broke the camel's back. And the people are the owners of the government. As they say, the people deserve the kind of government they have or they get. We must empower the people. ECOWAS must empower the people to take their destiny in their hands. And on that strength, will only then will ECOWAS become the real regional body. As of now, no, it cannot. Even in the, U the UN, hmm. let me quickly 
and UN. So we're not talking about the ECOWAS alone. Mm. In 2011, 2012, 2013 or thereabout, there was a challenge in South Sudan. South Sudan wanted an independence from Sudan. Several, uh, several motions went to the United States, I mean the, the United Nations. Then our own brother from our region was the Secretary General, a man of repute, the now late Kofiana. Denied, even recognizing that there was brutality in South Sudan. There was a genocidal action in Darfur. There was, there was issues, people were being killed on a daily basis in the South Sudan Blue Man area. Mm. What happened? The UN could not respond. Why? Sovereignty of state. Meanwhile, the UN does have the capacity, what they call the responsibility to protect. The UN could not mobilize to Sudan and stop the killings in South Sudan because of the sovereignty of the country called Sudan. Because what you now have, what you have today as South Sudan was actually in Sudan. Mm. Well, the Sudan was one country. Mm. So regional bodies does have some limited capacity. Look at what's happening right now in Russia and Ukraine civil war. What has happened to the regional bodies? Are they not, are they not regional bodies? Is they, even though I know that Ukraine does not belong to NATO, yeah. they are applied to NATO, but there may be other, but I know that Ukraine and Russia does not belong to the, to the European Union, they are of the East, East, East Europe, but they, I don't know, that, I don't know, I don't know, but for one country to immediately go into another country, you will expect that to be oppression or sovereignty. But it has happened. And today we are talking about more than one year of war, the Russian and the Ukraine war. So it's not only about West Africa, that's what I'm saying. Mm. But until the people, the people have the power, so we need to make echoes beyond the echo of state to the echoes of the people so that then only then will we have an echo responding having the backing of the people you know the, the the i think i think that is my my my, my opinion my point of view. The, the the situation in, in in africa is that we we have people we have uh, I, I, I don't want to bully to bully all the people, <laughs> okay. but we have so much all the people in our, you know, in 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 our uh, presidencies. Mm. You know, you in Senegal. I don't know the other country, but here in Senegal, we, we used to see the the same people who, who you know who, who are here from 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 now, and the the, the youth, the youth, the new generation want to to you know to have the power to rule because they see that uh, the, the you know the, the the country or the country for the general are not being well by those by by, by those people so uh, that's why uh, the the point about echo was of of people is really really interesting because this, this is right now an, an uh, existing the the people from west africa uh, you know, have uh, connections, have links, have joint ventures. The, uh, or the, the, the leaders uh, don't understand it again. And uh, in, the, in the recent situation in Senegal, uh, just to use, just to use the, uh, the, the situation, uh, ECHO will have released a light, 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 light communication about what is happening in the country. Mm. And that was you know, really, really helpful for us to see that Echo was don't uh, really really condemn what you know, and people people from the other countries uh, they they condemned uh, you know roughly what was happening and the the the, 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 the institution uh, was you know uh, so light about uh, the warnings about what 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 they say just to say that echo was of, of people is really existing right now but we have to to, to go further to the to, to have a, a really, really institution that represents us. And here in, uh, in, in Africa, and, and in Guatemala, for a general uh, stake, we work to have those kind of, uh, you know, those, 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 these kind of, uh, how I can say, situation, these kind of 
through the echoes of of, of people. Mm. Indeed, Abdul Aziz, sister, thank you so much for your time and for your contribution on the program. And of course, uh, Mr. Ui Aigbe there in Nigeria. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of this program. And uh, thank you, both of you, uh, for great contribution. Let's do this again uh, next time. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My guests have been Abdul Aziz Sise, advocacy assistant at Africtivis, and Ui Aigbe, governance expert and political activist. We would love to hear from you on any of these stories. Send us an email to wadr at wadr.org. You can also check out our YouTube videos and join us in the conversation on Twitter, Instagram at WADR News. And that's how we wrap things up on this edition of Weekly Top News on West Africa Democracy Radio, 94.9 FM, Dakar, Senegal. So join us next week for another review and insightful analysis of major news development. I am Imo Edit. Bye for now and have a great weekend. <music>